Thank you for joining us for our webinar about our exciting new Hungry for History Marker Grant Program. If you have an interest in showcasing the history and cultural heritage of your locally and regionally created food niche as well, you're in the right place. Hello and welcome. My name is Darren Pomeroy and I'm trustee and director of strategic initiatives for the William G. Pomeroy Foundation. I'm joined by my colleague, Susan Hughes. Susan serves as the Pomeroy Foundation's historian and archivist. In this webinar, we will give you more information about who we are, what the Hungry for History Marker Grant Program is, application criteria, and how to apply for a marker grant. Let's start out with a brief background about who we are. Uh, the Pomeroy Foundation is a private grant-making foundation established in 2005 by my father, Bill Pomeroy. We have two very distinct goals, to celebrate and preserve community history and to improve outcomes and support those facing a blood cancer diagnosis. Dad is a leukemia survivor following a life-saving stem cell transplant. However, today we're gonna to focus on the history side of our mission, specifically Hungry for History Marker Grants. So when I'm out and about at uh, events and conferences, I'm often asked, why does the Pomeroy Foundation fund historic markers of all things? Well, here on this slide, you can see photos of my dad with his father. Grandpa was a traveling salesman and spent many hours on the road. He would often take my dad with him, and whenever they would spot a historic marker, Grandpa would pull over, they'd get out of the car and read the marker together. And those, those moments really stuck with my dad and inspired him to begin funding historic markers when he created the foundation. He started out with one program limited to New York State history when he learned New York State stopped funding markers back in the 1930s. Since then, the foundation has expanded to administer a number of nationwide and state-focused historic marker grant programs with themes such as folklore, women's suffrage, patriot burials, civil rights, transportation canals, and the National Register of Historic Places. As a national funder of historic roadside markers, the foundation has awarded nearly 1,700 grants for markers and bronze plaques across 42 states, all the way to Alaska. So how can historic markers benefit your community? Well, first they help preserve important community history and at the same time help generate and promote historic tourism and economic development. They also enhance the pride of place for local residents. And finally, there are educational and cultural benefits to tell those often forgotten stories. Now let's talk about Hungry for History. Now here you see the style of the marker you will receive if your grant application is approved. As you can see, the program logo crowns the top of the marker and the colors are black with white raised lettering and yellow lettering for the title and credit lines. The rectangular marker is approximately three feet by two feet. Now that's not counting the logo and mounting base, which adds another few inches. The marker is cast aluminum and weighs about 40 pounds. Our grants provide funding for the marker, the seven foot aluminum pole and ship it to your location. Now it's time to turn it over to my colleague, Susan, to talk about the general eligibility guidelines and application process, as well as the requirement for primary source documentation. Thank you, Darren. Let's start by answering this question. Am I eligible for a Pomeroy Foundation grant? Hungry for History marker grants are available to 501c3 organizations, nonprofit academic institutions, and local, state, and federal government entities within the United States. This will include your village, town, city, and other municipalities. If you aren't affiliated with one of these types of organizations, it doesn't mean you can't get involved. One way you can is to contact an eligible local organization, historical society, or community with a municipal historian. These historical organizations will often apply for the grant on behalf of the individual. So let's take a look at the criteria for Hungry for History markers. All grant applications for the program will have to meet the following guidelines. It must be a prepared, ready-to-eat dish, such as an entree or dessert. It must contain a minimum of two ingredients. Note that in the application, we will ask you to list out all the ingredients included in creating the dish. The dish or a unique variation of it must have been created in the local or regional community where the marker will be placed. This slide shows beef on WEC and Michigan hot dogs, which are examples from the program's first grant round in 2021 that now have their own Hungry for History markers. Our guidelines require the dish to be created before 1960, and it must be significant to the greater community or beyond. 
It must still be available or eaten today in some form. So this slide also shows three additional qualifying food examples from our first Hungry for History grant round. Now we don't allow brand names. This slide shows a few examples of what wouldn't qualify, such as DiGiorno or Hershey's or Kraft. Now that you have information about eligibility guidelines, over the next few slides, we'll review the application process. First, identify a prepared food dish that would be appropriate based on the criteria and guidelines. The next step is to submit a short letter of intent through our online portal linked on our website. And the last step is completing the online application. Here's a look at part of the letter of intent or LOI. To complete the LOI, you will provide your proposed marker inscription. All five body lines of the marker must be utilized in addition to a title line. There are character limits to follow, 15 characters for the title line and up to 27 characters for each body line. Note that spaces and punctuation also count as a character. In addition to the proposed inscription, we require a complete detailed list of the primary source documentation you intend to provide in the application stage to verify the text on your proposed inscription. The letter of intent is submitted through our online application portal on our website. In the Hungry for History marker program, we require primary source documentation as part of the application process. We made a commitment to grant applicants and the public at large that if a historic marker is funded by the William G. Pomeroy Foundation, then they can be absolutely assured that the facts presented are indisputable today and into the future. And that's a promise we can only keep by having primary source documentation on file to support the text on the marker. Pomeroy Foundation markers are well researched with primary sources reviewed by historians. That's what sets your marker apart. You know you are obtaining the gold standard of historic markers. They will stand the test of time for future generations. The marker inscription cannot be based on secondary sources, and there's a big difference. Wikipedia, well, that won't work. Primary sources are as close as possible to the actual events and give a more accurate picture. Primary sources are often the most direct, the most certain, and the least filtered sources of data. Here's a few examples we're talking about. Uh, old menus, business records from a restaurant or an organization that sold that food, and newspaper articles from the time the food was being prepared. We try very hard to work with our grant applicants so that you are successful. We don't just deny an application. We will suggest changes to the marker text. We'll try to help you find additional primary sources if needed and so on. Upon approval of your submitted LOI, you will receive email notification and be invited to complete a full application online. On the application portal webpage, you will select the Hungry for History Marker Grant Program when you're approved and ready to apply. As part of your application, you will need to upload or mail in the primary source documents listed in the LOI. We will ask you to explain the historical significance of the dish you wish to commemorate, along with a list of the dish's ingredients. We will want to know what you intend, where you intend to place the marker, including GPS coordinates, and why this location makes sense. Please note that for this marker program, it may not be feasible to place the marker in a location specifically relevant to the dish. In these cases, we recommend you consider a public park, a town square, or some other area with a good amount of foot traffic and a place for cars to safely pull over and park so they can read the marker. Speaking of location, I would like to highlight the very important document required in the application, and that's the land use permission letter. Generally, this is a simple letter that verifies your organization has permission to install a marker on the property of the landowner. The letter is part of the application and it must be submitted before the application is considered complete and ready for review. One of the questions we get a lot about the land use letter is if the applying organization owns the property where they wanna put the marker, do they need to submit a permission letter? And the answer is yes. We need one signed by whoever has the authority to say that you can put it there, such as the board president, the executive director, or another figure in authority. If you don't know who owns the property, you may need to go to the municipality's office to confirm it. 
And if it's owned by the municipality, any authorized person can sign the letter. We ask that it's on official letterhead. Now I'm gonna turn it back over to Darren. All right, thanks, Susan. On the important dates for both Hungry for History grant rounds in 2022 are listed here. And they can also be found on the Hungry for History uh, webpage of the foundation website. Remember that you will need to submit the LOI by the LOI deadline in order to receive approval to access the full application. And now for the best part, once your marker is granted, it's time to celebrate. So, and please let us know about your plans to install the marker and if you decide to hold a dedication ceremony. Uh, we really love dedication ceremonies. And while they're not a requirement of our grant programs, marker unveilings often are held to bring people together to recognize the history being commemorated and the efforts of those who applied for the marker. Dedications can include speeches from local and regional politicians, along with live musical performances, historical reenactments, ribbon cuttings, history talks, and even parades. Uh, whether large or small, dedication ceremonies are great for community pride and generate interest in local history. We're also proud of the local and national news coverage received by our marker programs and grant recipients. That includes TV coverage, news stories, podcasts, and more. I also want to share with you a great resource you can find on our website right now, our interactive digital map. The map illustrates where Pomeroy funded markers are located across the country and also provides additional information about each marker's subject matter. Each Pomeroy funded marker receives its own unique page with information including marker address, GPS coordinates, and who applied for the grant. Additionally, every marker receives its own historical write-up, and you can also find photos, videos, and links related to the marker inscription. It's not only a great resource, but it's also a nice way to showcase your marker to the world beyond your community. Before we conclude our Hungry for History webinar, I just want to say that on behalf of the Pomeroy Foundation, thank you for tuning in. This is an especially fun marker grant program, and we look forward to working with you. Now that you know what Hungry for History is all about, can you think of an historic or iconic dish from your part of the country that might be a good fit? Our contact information is on this slide. So if you have additional questions about the marker program, please reach out to us. Thank you. <laughs>